big hit for Noiseworks. And before we jump back into part two, here's, uh, well, at least two of my favourite tracks from an awesome band. <laughs> one that just lights up the radio. so many hits and if you get a chance to see them live make sure you do they absolutely go off but here's part two of the chat with John Stevens. Yeah, so then how did noise work sort of come about I mean that's uh, goes down to one of Australia's greatest ever bands it's rock on. Oh cheers mate um, um Stuart Fraser and myself pretty much formed it uh, 1982 Melbourne Cup Day funnily enough uh, we met and uh, um, Kevin Nickel who's who plays drums in noise works he was actually playing in a band with one of my other brothers in Adelaide and they moved out from Adelaide to Sydney and the band, they were all sleeping on my lounge room floor in my one bedroom apartment. <laughs> and, um, and you know, they sort of imploded after a few months and split up and, and Kevin stayed in Sydney and, and I said, oh, well, come join me. And we just, you know, mucked around for a few years, the three of us and Steve Belby and Justin sort of joined us a couple of years later. We were playing as a band called The Change. Before we ended up doing noise works, calling out noise works. All right, okay. So what's it feel like when you first hear a noise works song on the radio? Have you got any like funny stories about either the first time or the best time? Oh, you know, it's always. I was always. I think it was better supported back then than in the old in the eighties. You know, from radio and mm. there was a lot. You know, there was the entertainment thing. You know, you work hard all week and you you went to see your favourite band and and you know the there was no there was no computer games. There was no computers actually in those mm. early eighties. It wasn't you know there's. The, you know, you go to the movies, you go see your band, you go to the pub. Basically, that's what it was all about. So nowadays, there's so many choices for people, um, different ways to spend their money. You know, so um, the whole the whole things change, you know, and the whole music scene's changed. You guys worked a lot, right? You guys did so many gigs. Oh, we were working six nights a week uh, all around the country. We were on the road for like eight months of the year, three oh. months three months in the studio and a month off. That's how we used to operate. We used to, you know, tour through Europe and America and Australia, obviously. And, just everywhere. It's a great life experience. You I can know? imagine, that's what I was going to ask you. Like, yeah. do you have a, is there a, like a classic story or some story that you look back on and just think that's just either it should be in a yeah, film or something? That I look back on that I'm very embarrassed about. Really? <laughs> oh, you know, you get, get, you know, have a few too many and make an idiot of yourself. Oh, really? Do it all the time. <laughs> no, you know, yeah, no. I mean, like, there's lots of occasions. I suppose uh, the most memorable one for me is the very first uh, international tour that Noisemix did. Because you know, as a struggling musician, you you put all your th thing into the band, into your mates, you know, and you're just such a sort of strong team. And you know, when it was a dream for everyone to play overseas, mm. which we ended up doing a lot of. So you know. It was great. Good stuff. And uh, do you think, like you said before about when the singing thing came around, it probably wasn't your dream. Your dream was to probably play for New Zealand in rugby league. But have you found now that it's been your dream? Do you think you've lived it? Uh, you know, I, I feel I'm extremely fortunate and um, to do something that I love. You know, I think I'm very much in the minority as far as being able to do that, and I really am grateful for that and appreciate that. And mm. uh, I always say that you know, people, you know, ask me. <laughs> those kind of questions and so, say, you know, just do, find out what it is you love and just do it and just, you know, because life's too short, you know, and uh, do nothing worse than being stuck hating what you're doing. I yeah. mean, I think a lot of people, you know, are unfortunately in that position and really I'm very lucky. Yeah, awesome, man. And who's the people that sort of inspire you that, that either you grew up loving or even now that people that sort of inspire you to do what you do? <sighs> Uh, just uh, everybody that comes to see a gig, I suppose. I mean, just general public, uh, you know. I mean, I'm always inspired by performing because every night is different and, you know, you have to give so much to yourself, or well, I do anyway, um, and that what you get back is what inspires me, you know. I mean, ask me what who inspires me singing-wise. There's tons of different people, you know. I mean, but that's, that's it. But I, I really think that you know, live, doing the live thing is, is the thing that keeps me in it, you know. Because um, I just love that 
wrapped environment so much, and I've always figured that I'm not I'm not, I'm not going to be very good until I'm about sixty when I'm like you know the old bluesman from way back. Like, stories to tell. Yeah, and you know you you, get, you really find yourself after you know thirty forty years doing this shit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Man, that's that's when it all comes together, I reckon. Yeah. So what was it like when you sort of Noiseworks wrapped up for a bit and you did the musical? Like, that yeah, must have been yeah, incredible. It's got a superstar. Were you was nervous? Like, actually, no, I wasn't actually because I knew that I'd learnt that show when I was about twelve, you know, <laughs> right. just from loving the soundtrack. So I knew everybody's part. So I wasn't nervous about performing it. Um, uh, it was just one of those things where it was an opportunity that came along, and uh, you know, and to do an arena spectacular. It was the first of its kind anywhere in the world. Um, and obviously working with Farnham and Kate Sobrano, John Waters, Angry wow. Anderson, you know, all those eclectic sort of people in the one show is pretty amazing. And, and that show actually still holds all box office records in Australia for um, the most performances. I mean, we did 30, uh, 30 entertainment centres in Sydney and 28 tennis centres in Melbourne and break it, it, everywhere. You know, it's quite, so it's quite a phenomenal. Um, show to be a part of. Yeah, and again, like a long way from a footy field in New Zealand, and like the journey. Do you know what the funny thing was, actually, with Jesus Christ Superstar, they did it at school, at uh, high school, and I actually <laughs> wanted to play Judas, <laughs> you know, it was just, I love Judas, you know, and uh, I wasn't allowed to because I was a real bad kid, so I wasn't allowed anywhere near it, and I got thrown out of school anyway, so. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So, hey, yeah, it was Anyway, it's <laughs> last laugh, I suppose. <laughs> it did. And I uh, mate, you know, 2007 about to wrap up in 2008. What's happening at the moment? Like, what Maybe. stuff do you still want to do? Oh, I mean, I've been up here doing the um, classic week here at Sanctuary Cove, and um, it's been awesome. It was like the third year I've sort of I've done it, been involved in this uh, charity thing. Yeah, tell us about that. Like, what's what is it? Oh, it's just, you know, so it's a um, charity, children's charity, where um, you know Phil Hart and his team put it on every year, and. Basically, you know, the corporate sponsors come and spend a lot of money, and you know, goes up to various charities. And uh, and I'll be performing actually this year, which is kind of good because uh, Phil resurrected the Oz Rock Cafe theme, which he he started uh, 21 years ago back in Sydney. So um, you know, we had uh, like myself, uh, Ian Moss, uh, Mike Gale from Choir Boys, um, Michael Spivey from Bad Loves, Jenny Morris again. I don't know, Jenny Morris. Um, there's a whole whole bunch of people, Daryl Braithwaite even came and performed, and Shannon Knoll came and performed. So it was a great line of pe uh, people, you know, and uh, we just had a ball. Uh, I first did it in two year 2000 with NXS. We came up here and played on the on the water out here. And so, yeah, I've always sort of been, you know, I'm, I do a lot of charity stuff. I really enjoy sort of being a help out doing something like that, you know. It's kind of penance really for all the the rock and roll nights. Cool man. Well you kinda of touched on it before to wrap up, but like what's it feel like for you when you're when you're out there playing songs that you know people love? I mean like I said you went in the email, I used to get in trouble for playing your songs too much on the radio. Like people love noise works and the classic hits. Like what's it feel like for you when you're out there belting out, you know, reach out or something? It must just be incredible. Uh you know, I was just always in the moment, you know. Uh, I don't really think about it's quite humbling, really, and when you know uh, people come up to you and say, "Well, this song, you know, was a soundtrack to my life," you know, yeah. this particular period, and that's really humbling. It's not, it's not something I'd really dwell on, um, mm. because I'm just a great believer in being in the moment and you know, and looking forward, not back. You know, mm. you can't change yesterday, you know, mm. uh, but you can certainly work to towards tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and just certainly, you know, this the love of what I do is is what kind of keeps me going, and and I'm like I said earlier, I'm just really grateful that I'm still able to do what I do, and the fact that people go, "Whoa, you're a legend," I don't feel like a legend, <laughs> you know. I feel still like you know, I'm, you know, struggling to to you know get it going, get it going. and it's kind of, it's kind of weird, really, you know, to have have that sort of feeling. I think that sort of keeps it interesting for me after all these years, you know. And as I said, performance is everything, and you know, because every night is different. He's, he's just no guarantees about anything and yeah. so that's I love that precariousness of oh, man. it's awesome to chat with you here really quickly thank you and uh, great memories there noise works for on cheers